Good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure and very inspiring to me to be here today um, and to hear all of the presenters. And it's inspiring to be in Europe where most of the public sector deployments of free software are occurring. It's widely considered that the United Kingdom is the sick man of Europe in terms of public sector adoption of free software. I'm not going to deny that today, but I am going to examine the validity of it. I'm going to look at the history of it briefly, what the situation is at the present, how true it is, and briefly speculate about what is going to happen in the future. If we are the sick man of Europe in terms of public sector adoption, it's not because of our community credentials. We have a free software community as strong as anywhere in the world. In terms of leaders of the community, we have people like Alan Cox from the Linux kernel. Jeremy Allison, one of the co-founders of the Samba project, is British. The current leader of the, the current Debian project leader comes from the UK, Steve McIntyre. John O'Bacon is the community leader of the Ubuntu project. In terms of our participation in communities, we have as strong as anywhere in the world as well. Not just Debian, not just Ubuntu, Exim, the mail transport agent comes from the UK, mail scanner. We have project members in the Open LDAP project, many from the Postgres core team. It's also not because of corporate participation in the free software world as well. I will skip over my own company, but I will cite in passing just two, Canonical and Alfresco. It's not because of our private sector adoption of free software as well. I would assert that our private sector companies are taking it on just as much as anywhere in the world as well. To name just a few, British Petroleum are a user of OpenLDAP. One of the biggest private sector case studies in the UK is one of our top private companies, Specsavers, expanding internationally very quickly. They're a full case study of the use of free software, not just in the central infrastructure, where they use OpenLDAP for their directory services and Samba for their file and print, but right out into all of their thousands of stores, Linux-backed, point-of-sale terminals, the whole lot. Internationally, UK private sector companies are winning contracts as well. It's still with the marketing people, so I can't name a name, but a fairly well-known consortium of phone companies who are developing Linux for use on phone handsets have outsourced its infra infrastructure to a UK open source services group. No. The reality is the UK government has had a chilling effect on open source adoption in the UK. Not just because of policy positions, which are changing, I hasten to note, but simply because of the sheer scale of a government in any market has a disproportional effect on the policies in the rest of the market. The UK government, recent research has shown spends over 16 billion pounds sterling every year on IT projects. 16 billion. Unfortunately, there is not a good track record either. Not a good track record stretching back hundreds of years. To cite just a few historical examples, George Ball, the inventor of Boolean algebra, the very basis of computer logic, was regarded as a crank and laughed at for inventing a form of mathematics which nobody believed there was any application for. The world's first computer, inverted commas, the universal difference engine, was invented by Charles Babbage, widely regarded in the UK as insane. More recently, Alan Turing, the founder, widely regarded, of modern computing, was not only ignored by the UK government, but driven to some fairly desperate acts. It has only been in the past few weeks, 50 years later, that Alan Turing got the apology he deserved from the Prime Minister Gordon Brown. 
the reality is the roots of the ignoring of free software go back to the very, very start of the labor power in the UK. They wanted to appear friendly towards big business in order to appear friendly to the city of London and chose a policy of favoring big business. I can tell you now that the first signs of change in the UK are starting to appear. But first of all, I want to make the point that it's not just the government policy. There have always been significant deployments of free software in the United Kingdom. Generally ignored, however. To cite just a few examples, in Wales, there have been deployments for over a decade, large deployments of open source software. Powers Council being an example of it. Bristol City Council has 5,500 desktops running open office. Carmarthenshire County Council has a county-wide email system for schools used by tens of thousands of schools in the region. St George's Medical School, the largest medical training college in the UK, again has tens of thousands of users using free software groupware and email systems. And the Yorkshire and Humberside Grid for Learning have a web proxy filtering system backed into Open LDAP used by over a quarter of a million users there. The recent events I referred to are the change in government policy. That's one of them. And also the first ever adoption of an open source company onto a government procurement list. Procurement lists are endemic in the UK and have seriously hampered the adoption of free software throughout the public sector. Agencies in the UK, led by Bechter, the educational organization, are now talking up free software. Three very brief examples of the change in policy and the procurement list are we have schools adopting, we have a new council in Wales, Denbyshire, adopting a county-wide email system, and most significant of all, the UK has its first national open source project Launched yesterday, it's called the National Digital Resource Bank, and it is a bank of Creative Commons licensed material, publicly available for the educational system and importable into VLEs. It's based on the widely used system in Spain, Agrega, and it's the first result of a collaboration between the uh, British UK ministers and Spanish ministers. Launched yesterday, countrywide. Very brief, oh, and a preview. I can't actually name it because it's being announced at the Bechter Conference on open source on the 15th of this month. There is just about to be an entire region in the UK consisting of 17 local authorities, approximately 10% of the land mass of the country, announcing a project in the educational area um, to do feasibility studies, pilot projects, and implementations at regional, local, and down to the school level. Model schools running entirely open source. So it's getting better. A brief look to the future, and I'll keep it very brief. It is the case now that every single one of the UK opposition parties have a policy on open source. It's also a not very, very well-kept secret that each one of them is working with open source advocates in the UK. Some may say this is what drove the change in UK government policy. To name just one, the Conservative Party are talking open source at the very, very highest level. The party leader, David Cameron, George Osborne, the Shadow Chancellor, has widely cited hundreds of millions of pounds of savings available in the UK off of that huge budget from free software. And Adam Afri, the Science Innovation Shadow Minister. So I give you my confident prediction that at last, within the next few years, the United Kingdom will join the rest of you in Europe in its adoption of free software. Thank you for listening.